Dr. Joe Mulholland, I guess then cost you agree at at her her cool and skull Saudi show. Tasha more want us to more Ganesh and the featuring Turmi and Aktu a Gaka Jila show. Gaffy and Lechri have done it. A Gaheri and more than it than yet a tougha a genuine the actor and take on their show. Tasha more want us to more. It is a great boost for the local economy in relation to having this summer school here every year. And I want to praise the organising committee for for. For their endeavours uh, to make this such a success, it is, is and I, I welcome the invitation to speak at this here, my third time speaking at the Miguel Summer School. The question that has been asked of us here in, in this session is whether we need our electoral systems and political culture. Does it need to be changed? And I'm one that believes wholeheartedly that both are requiring substantial change. It is time to change Ireland, and part of that change needs to be our electoral system and our political culture. But we also need political change, because we can change and reform our electoral systems all we like, but for most people, without the political change that accompanies it, it will all be just the same. That said, we have to respond to the widespread public belief that the political system has failed us. Public disillusionment with politics has grown over the role of the government and the establishment parties in bringing about the economic crisis, that that has become more apparent in recent times. It has been exasperated by revelations of corruption, of outrageous expenses claims, and of a dull and ineffectual erectus. The system of proportional representation, the STV system, has become distorted. It is a system that was designed for seven to nine seat constituencies and has now been applied to constituencies of three, four, and five. The cronyism which has been at the heart of the political culture of the state for so long, was central to the failure to regulate the banks and deal with the property bubble. And the political culture and the electoral system are deeply partitionist, a fact that has hurt border counties here in Donegal, it has been seen very clearly. And the denial of northern representation in the houses of the Arctis is just a further expression of that sort of patriotism. The political culture we have is one that was created by the political class, the political class who have held power since the foundation of the state. They are the architects of a system that protects their own interests, the interests of the elite at the top of Irish society, from the highest levels of civil service and the private sector to the judiciary. The constitution, which is meant to uphold the rights of citizens, is flawed and it is outdated and a new constitution needs to accompany electoral reform. Laws that have their foundation in the outdated 1937 constitution do not protect the rights of citizens, uh, uh, such as children, nor of the social economic rights of many of our citizens. As someone who is currently in the process of taking a judicial review case against this government over the failure to hold a by-election in a constituency where there has been a vacancy for over 13 months, I am acutely aware of some of the flaws in our electoral system. And there shouldn't be a requirement for me or any other citizen to go on the, to the courts on such an issue. A time limit for, holding, for the holding of by-elections should be set down in law and is one of the easy measures that could be introduced in September when the Dáil resumes. Our electoral system and the Erechthus are not fit for the modern democracy. The electoral system has given us an Erechthus that is largely male, middle class and middle aged, and it is not surprising that it is so unrepresentative. Many people have no engagement at all with our electoral system. They are either not on the electoral register, they don't vote or they simply don't care. Those most estranged for electro from our electoral systems and from politics come from the most disadvantaged communities in the state. And any reform any reform that we propose or that we undertake of our political system must have as one of its first objectives to increase the participation of our citizens, particularly those who do not participate in the political process at all levels from voting right up to holding office. Voters are the key starting block of any electoral system, but often the most overlooked. Getting simply on the electoral register should be a simple and straightforward matter, but it isn't. 
using PPS numbers to avoid fraud rather than putting hurdles in the paths of those seeking to get on the register should be implemented. The process needs simplification with automatic renewals of registered voters for starters. And I would like to see an independent electoral commission take on this task rather than leave it to local authorities across the state as is the case at present. An electoral commission could take on this task along with voter education on elections. And the most critical task of such a commission should be to increase turnout of numbers and numbers contesting seats at all tiers of representation. All elections, in my belief, should be held at the weekend to increase participation, and we should look at the issue of two-day polling to allow maximum participation. I believe that voting age should be reduced to 16, and consideration should be given to reducing the age at which a person can run for office in the Dal from 21 down to 18. And we need to do this to get more young people engaged in politics. And many young people are engaged in politics, but aren't allowed to participate either at the age of 16 or at the age of 20 in relation to running for office in the Dal. I also believe that Irish citizens living in other jurisdictions should be given the right to vote, as is the norm in many other modern democracies. We need a radical overhaul of the electoral process in order to ensure that there is both a more democratic expression on the part of the population, including on an all-Ireland basis, and that the actual elected institutions are made more representative of the popular will. Proportional representation should be strengthened should be strengthened through the introduction of larger multi-seat constituencies as there were under the revolutionary first L and for a period after, after the founding of the southern state. This would mean that the minimum number of seats in any constituency would be increased to five. That would ensure a more accurate representation of parties and individuals based on their percentage vote in contrast to the current system that favours the largest parties, especially in the case of three and four seat constituencies. And I also believe, and there's been a bit of discussion about this here, but there should be an examination, and we've got a taste of that there today, about the party list system and how it operates in other countries. And we should consider it, if necessary, introducing such a system to elect a proportion of the Dáil. It is my belief that we need to strengthen the role of Parliament. And the Dáil can become more effective if small changes were implemented which could empower the opposition to make more effective uh, use of their time and make the, more, uh, make the Dell more relevant and more accountable and more relevant to the lives of the ordinary people. The Dell needs to play a stronger role in holding the government to account. And I would like to see a situation where ordinary TDs, where backbenchers would be able to get to their feet and question the Tishas on the issues that are of direct relevance to them and their constituents without having to give the four days prior notice of, the, of their intention to put down such a question. We need the Dal to be more spontaneous than it is at present. We need to allow uh, the discussion that ha is happening in each community, in the parishes and the corner shops, to take place in the Dal. And the current rules that are set down doesn't allow for that to take place uh, immediately. So I want to see big changes in terms of how all of this operates, but also how legislation is brought through the Arctis and how the committees work. I believe that legislation should start in the committees allowing for members to have a real influence in the formation of legislation. And all members should be allowed to bring forward draft legislation for consideration by the committee that they are a member of. And the committee's chairs should be allocated proportionally based on party strengths and individual relevance and should not have the additional financial reward attached to them. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be used as a reward for loyal backbenchers or whatever party is in government. Committees should also be given greater powers of investigation, and there should be an obligation on the government to consider proposals put forward by a committee, such as reports that are to be done by members of the Erectus on, on a monthly basis, one of my own reports, into tackling the social and economic inequalities in the West. Although passed by an Erectus committee unanimously, it doesn't require the government to pay any attention into one of the hundred proposals that has uh, been submitted by that committee to the government ministers. I think taking the fixation of the local issues out of parliamentary elections 
It just can't happen if there's not a parallel reform and empowerment of local government in Ireland. I believe both go hand in hand. And that reform needs to see us move towards a more fam family-friendly sittings. And I know many people wouldn't appreciate me saying this, but I believe that if we are to increase, increase the number of female representation in the Houses of the Arctic, then we need to look at shorter sitting days, but with shorter periods of recess over the summer and Christmas. And I know that won't suit anybody as somebody who has the, the longest journey to travel from my home to the houses of the earth is, I, I like the idea when I have to stay overnight that we can sit till 11 or 12 or in some cases 1 o'clock in the morning to deal with legislation. But the reality is for those, for many of those who travel home and who can travel home because of the proximity to Dublin, it, it, doesn't, suit, it doesn't suit raising a family uh, when you're sitting uh, to, to 1 o'clock in the morning three, three days a week. So I think that we do need to look at a, a better system that uh, would allow those with, uh, p with parents and those with young families to participate uh, in, in the Dal and in the Shannad uh, in a more family-friendly way. I think that we also need to make the Dal more accessible to the public. And we only have to look at the Constitution, and the Constitution says that setting of the Dal should happen in public. But the reality is, anybody who's been to the Dal, anybody who's been to the Houses of the Arctis, the reality is, if you want to sit in the visitors' gallery, then you have to get the permission of a member of the Houses of the Arctis. A member of the Houses uh, of the Shannad or of the Dal has to sign you in. So it is a privileged position, and it's not happening in public. It's happening in public uh, for those that want to, for those that have access to a politician. But somebody walking into the street cannot go into the Houses of the Arctis and listen to the debate that's taking, and I believe this is something that should change. If we are serious about dressing, addressing the warped political culture in the state, then that will require a shift that seeks an end to cronyism and an end to the privileged position enjoyed by the elite in the state. We may not have a body of registered lo lobbyists in the state, but what we have is something far more insidious. We have politicians who in many cases are too close to those that they are meant to be regulating, rewarding th those close to you with position on state boards, moving government departments to your own constituencies, ensuring sports clubs in your own constituency gets a disproportionate level of funding when you are a minister. These are all examples of cronyism at work. And over recent years, we have had the government politicians too close to the property developers, the property developers too close to the bankers, the bankers too close to the regulator, and is it any surprise that we are in such a mess that we're in today? After the 2007 general election, we saw a person who was junior minister in the government move straight to the head of the Construction Industry Federation. And we need rules to prevent such moves. We need rules to prevent people from making moves like this straight from government to the heart of those bodies trying to wield influence over government policies. And there's also a need to end the situation where a position on state boards are doled out as rewards to supporters of whatever party happens to be in government. And there also needs to be a call of the quangos of the unelected bodies and cut back on the waste and, improved, and improvement of transparency and efficiency in decision making. As a member of the Shannad, and I've said this many times, I've said this before I was elected to the Shannad, and I've also said it afterwards in, on many occasions, both uh, in the Shannon and outside before Enda Kenny uh, had that um, brainstorm, whatever evening he had that. But I do believe that the current Shannon serves no useful purpose and should be abolished. As it is currently constituted, it is not a democratic institution, and it merely reproduces the existing balance of power in the Dáil and acts as a rubber stamp for government. And I, talked about, I listened to Noel's contribution and he talked about political reform and the parties maybe kicking it into the long grass. And we've had, we've had committees scrutinise the uh, reform of the Shannon, about 11 different reports, um, a constitutional referendum that's never been act, enacted. Uh, and we've had all of that. And the latest cross-party supported uh, proposals, which aren't supo supported by Sinn Féin, because Sinn Féin weren't in the Shannon at the time and weren't part of it, but they were produced just before the 2007 general election, so they're quite new in Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil, Labour, 
uh, have signed up to these. And, and, and those proposals increase the numbers in the Shannon. They increase the numbers of Tisha's nominees to the Shannon, and they do introduce a partial list system. But I believe that that's the type, if that's the type of uh, political reform that we're having, then uh, you know, we may not have it at all. I believe that there could be a case made for a system with two houses of parliament. Uh, but for this to make sense, they have to have two very clear and separate and defined roles. The current Shannon is an affront to democracy. It gives votes to people based on their educational attainment. It gives multiple votes to members of local authority. And it ensures a government majority through 11 Tisha's nominees. We could have a Shannon elected on a list system which seeks to, which seeks to represent civic society and minorities, a type of civic forum. Or we could have a more structured forum, such as the United States Senate, where each of the 32 counties would have one representative directly elected, regardless of the population size, while representatives would continue to be elected to the DEL based on, their, uh, on the basis that they represent a set number of electors. My own view is that all of members of the Shannon should be directly elected. I believe that those from political parties should be barred from seeking nomination. And I believe that those from outside the state and those uh, from the age of 16 should be able to elect representatives in the Shannon. And it should seek to be a civic forum. If, if we're going to have the same as we have now, which is me as a member of Sinn Féin uh, in the upper house arguing the same points that are being argued by Sinn Féin in the lower house, then it is a waste of time, a waste of money, uh, and is a, a luxury that we can all do without. But I think in looking at the question, we must look much wider at the concept of democracy than simply parliamentary representation, crucial as it is. We therefore would favour the introduction of meaningful mechanism to participative democracy. And these would include local community councils and citizens' initiative, which would allow people to set and train a process leading to legislation on specific issues and which would give ordinary citizens a direct input into decision making. A major transformation of local government is also required, including an increase in councillors' power to include appropriate local control over the provision of services, including greater local control over budgets and financing of local government. That could also require the power to collect tax revenue. We would also restore or increase councillors' power over planning, housing, transportation and waste management. In recent years, councillors will know that the powers that they've had have, have been curtailed, particularly in, the, in relation to waste management. And that would correspondingly limit the power of uh, county and city managers' uh, powers as they exist at this point in time. The structure of local government needs to be reformed in order to make it more accountable. This would entail the directly electing chairs and mayors who would assume many aspects of council management and oversight role. And I think that we also need to build towards Irish unity by increasing local, regional and cross-border coordination and integration of council work in development planning and service provision. Kerjay, I, I welcome this discussion on reform of our electoral system and our political culture. I hope that it is the start of a process of building support for ideas that will really make our political system more inclusive, more democratic, and fit to, meet, fit to meet the needs of Ireland today and in the years ahead. I would share some of the concern of the previous speaker that some of the political parties are merely grandstanding on this year. I, for one, believe that you know, under a new government, under a Fine Gael government, we will not see the end of the Shannon. Uh, and that just you know, is to be seen by talking to people in the Shannon, the Fine Gael representatives, Labour representatives, indeed, Fiala representatives. I don't believe that that will happen unless the impetus is, is taken right now, kicking it to touch in, talk, in terms of a, a future, future constitutional referendum and allowing uh, you know, an excuse of blaming the Labour Party that they propose um, a different system if the two parties were to be into government isn't good enough. We need to take decisive action. We've had many, many reports on this year. We've had the experts, the scientists, report on this year. And I think it is time for serious political reform and a change to the political culture, but also the need for wider political change and not just a case of cha moving uh, chairs around both the houses of, of Arrakis at this point in time.